Hey, welcome to Sake Boss, where I help you understand sake, pick sake that you like, and enjoy sake like a boss. This is my first of many weekly sake reviews, and I'm super excited because beneath this sheath, I've got something special for you. So a couple quick things about this channel before we hop into the review. First, if you know nothing about sake, you're a total beginner, I'm really glad you're here because my mission is to make sake super easy to understand and just fun to drink. Next, this channel is about premium sake, not that terrible stuff you may have had the misfortune of tasting in the past. We're not talking about the tiny cup of hot gorilla urine they'll try to serve you at the airport food court PF Chang's. No, my friends, we're talking about the good shit. So for my first review, I thought about how I could give you guys immediate value from my 20 years of sake experience, so I decided to give you a shortcut to some rare knowledge that it took me a long time to figure out about sake. So what, pray tell, is beneath this sheath? It's phenomenal, it's delicious, and I really wanna drink it right now. But first, I'm willing to bet that if you know anything about sake, you're probably thinking, this is this guy's first sake review, he wants to impress us, he's got a Junmai Daiginjo in there, I know it. <laughs> Guess again, my friends. That would be the obvious move, and I'm not an obvious boss. So why is Junmai Daiginjo the obvious choice? Well, that's because most people consider it to be the best of the three basic types of premium sake. Junmai, Junmai Ginjo, Junmai Daiginjo. Junmai on the bottom, Junmai Daiginjo on top. But this puts people into a trap. People chase Junmai Daiginjo so much that they don't realize there's other premium sake out there that they may enjoy even more. I was guilty of this for years and I missed out. So I don't want the same thing to happen to you. So beneath this sheath is a Junmai, but it is handcrafted. It does have a long fermentation. It does use special ingredients and it is just as luxurious as any Junmai Daiginjo out there. Ladies and gentlemen and non-binary associates, I give you Sublime Beauty. The name says it all. This Junmai is one of my favorites. It's bold, it's wild, it's full of flavor. And I bet those aren't descriptors you normally associate with sake, right? The reason is that with Sublime Beauty, every single step has been taken for flavor maximization. Listen, I can't wait to crack this thing open, so enough yakking. Let's get to cracking. Oh yeah, okay, let's, let's get up in this motherfucker. When you crack open a bottle of sake and you pour a glass, the first thing you wanna do is check out how it looks. Now, most sake is clear because it's charcoal filtered, but you'll notice this isn't clear. This is more of a light straw color, and that's because it hasn't been charcoal filtered. Now, why not? When you charcoal filter, you're not just removing color, you're also removing character. You're removing flavor. So we call this muroka, which means unfiltered. Hashtag no filter. Next thing you wanna do is swirl this bad boy. Now, the more oxygen you get in here, the more you'll unlock the aromas. And I always tell people, just keep swirling until the aroma stops developing. Mm. And now my favorite part, sippy time. Mmm. Oh man, wow, that is so good. One more time. Damn. Mm. I bet you three bitcoins you've never had anything like this. A blast of umami. I mean, this is this is the definition of umami. Umami ain't raised no fool. You get that black cherry, almond, molasses, cremini mushroom for sure, a little white pepper on the finish. It's got a very long finish for a sake, I gotta say. That really hits. I mean, it's so savory and rich, but you can sip it. Not like something heavy that you're gonna need to have food with. This has got beautiful acidity. I mean, probably about three times less acidity than wine, but it's gonna pair well with something a little bit richer. It's gonna cut through a bit. And it's just got that perfect balance of earthy with a tiny sweet undertone and that acidity to carry it through and just wrap it all up together. It's got no astringency, no bitterness. Ah, this is round. Yeah, you can sip this forever. I don't know if you've noticed, but this is dwindling. One glass now. Hoo-wee! Well, I'm gonna try not to get too hammered, but I can't make any promises. Now, you might be asking yourself, 
why is this thing so packed with flavor? Isn't sake known for its delicacy and subtlety? Well, Junmai Daiginjos are known for their subtlety. And that's because the rice that goes into them is very highly polished. The more the rice gets polished before you make it into sake, the more elegant and luxurious the flavor. Usually, most people are obsessed with rice polishing. But the rice that went into this sake was basically brown rice, barely polished at all. And usually that's a problem because it can lead to some off flavors that you may have tasted in the past, P.F. Chang's. But when done right, like in Sublime Beauty, less polishing allows for more rice expression. Just like grapes and wine, different rice has different characteristics that can be expressed if you don't polish them away. That's why we get such intense flavors on this. All right, it's 8 p.m. here in New York and I just got something delivered from DoorDash to pair with this and you're not gonna believe what it is. Watch this. Oh ho, what is this? Yes, we have a burger, don't we? Oh ho, ho, yeah. That, my friends, is a bacon blue cheeseburger. And let's get a close up. I don't know if it's gonna look good or gross, but it's gonna taste good. Mm. Okay, so here's what I do. First, take a sip. ready to hatches. Then take a bite, then sandwich the sandwich with another sip. Know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> oh man, that makes it so much better. Oh my God. It brings out the sweetness of the bun, the saltiness of the patty and the bacon, and it just marries really beautifully with that blue cheese. Mm. I don't know what else could do this but I'm going back in. Wow, it gets more savory and more sweet with this. This doesn't become bitter and it's not overshadowed by the blue cheese. I mean, this is double blue cheese. I mean, a lot of this is because it's got the umami and the acidity. I've never had this combo. I just knew it would be good. And this thing has exceeded my expectations. Oh my God. I gotta put this away or else I'll just sit here and eat. I'm gonna finish you later. Do I have anything? Hope I'm not looking sloppy. I mean, that's incredible. I figured it was gonna be good, but man, I mean, the fact that it can stand up to a double bacon, double blue cheese burger, it's ridiculous. Much of it had to do with how savory this is, but that extra layer of depth added by the acidity really hit home. And that's because Sublime Beauty is made with an ancient starter method called Kimoto, which leads to wilder, gamier flavors and more acidity. This sake tastes so alive because it is alive. There are active enzymes that are still alive in this bottle because they weren't killed off by pasteurization. It's like if you took freshly pressed sake, dipped a spoon in, and took a sip, this is how it would taste. We call that nama, which means unpasteurized. And to make things even more intense, this has not been diluted. Most sake is watered down to about 16% alcohol. This is a little bit stronger at about 17 or 18%. It's what we would call genshu, which means undiluted but you can't even taste it. It's dangerous. So in Japanese, this would be called Junmai Kimoto Muroka Nama Genshu, which means Junmai Sake, made in the traditional way, unfiltered, unpasteurized, undiluted. Pretty cool, right? You know something no one else knows right now. I like to compare sake to people or things that are familiar. This sake is made of brown ingredients. It's outspoken, full of flavor, wild, alive, bold, super successful, and doesn't give a fuck about how people think it's supposed to be. This sake is Cardi B. Humble beginnings, the supreme luxury. This is Cardi B in the glass. Taste it and let me know what you think in the comments. So who would make a sake like this? What kind of crazy man, evil genius would make the Cardi B of sake? The answer is, None, it was made by a woman. That's right, a woman. Rumiko Moriki is the brewer that made this and she is a boss. In fact, she is Japan's first female master brewer. Now that's a really big deal. It doesn't matter that the brewery was in her family for four generations, women didn't do this. If you think about how many hundreds of years sake had been brewed, no woman had ever done it until this woman. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna pour another glass for this story. This is the best job I've ever had in my life. Okay, so the story's pretty crazy. It's the 80s, her father's dying, and they make the unprecedented decision 
to give her a shot at being the head of the brewery. The only problem is the business is failing and they've just lost key partners. And so she's going door to door selling sake, door to door. This brewery would normally hire a head brewer, but they couldn't afford it. So she just stepped up and decided she was gonna learn everything it took to do that. And there wasn't a lot of support for a chick trying to brew sake. So the days were long and really frustrating. And at the end of each one, she would take solace in comic books, actually. In Japan, they call them manga. So the crazy thing is that one of these manga is called Natsuko no Sake. And it's all about this female sake brewer named Natsuko. Now this is kind of weird in itself because there are no female sake brewers. But what's even crazier is that Natsuko has the same birthday as Rumiko. Same birthday. So Rumiko takes this kind of as a sign, uses this as inspiration. She sees this character as herself and it drives her to just keep going, keep fighting. I mean, what are the odds? Oh, it's crazy. So understandably, she's fired up and she writes the author a seven page thank you note for the comic book. And he responds, he's inspired by her story. And it just so happens that this guy has connections in the sake industry and he decides to hook her up with those connections that allowed the brewery to thrive. And not only that, when she brewed her first original sake, he's the one who drew the label for it. I mean, the story is heartwarming. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm getting a little toasty. Someone needs to make a comic book about a dude named Sake Boss who's a billionaire. You know what I'm saying? So she really credits this guy with basically saving the brewery. But if she weren't so skilled and unorthodox in her approach, who knows if her brewery would still be around? And the amazing thing is that she's inspired many creative female master brewers to come after her. And we all know that when you have diversity, you have innovation. And that's what Sublime Beauty represents. The fact that this exists, is it serendipity? Is it fate? I don't know. But in the words of Cardi B, it's that what? That wonderfully astonishing product. All right, first sake review done. I really hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, let me know in the comments. And if it's not too much to ask, please hit that like button, hook a brother up with the YouTube algorithm, and perchance slightly doff that subscribe button. And remember, this ain't Fight Club. Let everybody know about Sake Boss. Till next time, if you sip something, sip sake.